Okay, so this evening we are going to fly the Cessna 152 in near zero visibility conditions. So I've got the simulator set to preset rain, so it's heavy rain, and we are going to fly a route using radio navigation to go from A to B. It's not very windy today, so we've just got the, the rain to deal with. Um, let's go and have a look at little nav map to see where we are. Now, let's first of all, to prove we're going to do this properly, we're going to turn off the AI aircraft. We're also going to turn off our own position. So we know we are at Tri-County KASJ on the, um, the map. We're going to fly out 15 miles to this VOR station at 114.60 CVI. And then we're going to fly. We're not going to fly directly to our destination at Northeastern Regional. We're going to fly out at an angle of 145 degrees from the VOR station and then pick up the ILS and turn in to land at Northeastern Regional. Now you can see here I've got a, a marker on the map that I've already drawn. So this is using the measure distance method. I'll just read you that so you can see it happen. So if we draw and right click on anywhere on the map, on this nav map, we can measure distance. And we can we can say exactly where we want to measure from, so the VOR. And we can go over here, for example, and we can say, yeah, we want to go and acquire the ILS at, say, 140 degrees out of the, the VOR. So you can see the line there is 140 degrees magnetic out of there, leads to the beginning of the, the ILS. So this gives us a few pointers straight away. When we come into the ILS, we know on a three degree ILS, let's just go and check. Let's see how high the airfield is off the ground. So 18 feet, so nothing to worry about. So we know that the end of an ILS feather on a three degree ILS is about 2,500 feet. So we will climb and our crews will be at 2,500 feet throughout the flight. But w again, we're flying the, um, the Cessna 152, remember, so there's no autopilot. We're going to have to do all of this by hand as well as navigate. So it's going to be quite challenging. But the VOR station will be our friend and it should get us from A to B without too much drama. So we're going to take off. There's a slight wind out of the west, or it certainly was earlier. Let's just go and check that. So show information for Tri-County. And we've got wind 233 knots. Yeah, so it's coming from about this direction. Three knots. Let's just go and check Northwestern Regional as well. Oh, we've got the wrong information there. So show information for the airfield. On the meter, we've got 290 degrees, five knots. So it's swung around a little bit at the coast, but it's still only a five knot crosswind. OK, so we are going to get going from Tri-County and then we'll turn right towards the VOR and we're looking to follow the 82 degree line into the or radial into the VOR. Okay so let's go and get inside our little Cessna in the rain and first things first we need to go and turn the fuel on beneath and then have a look at the controls down here so we've got the mixture over here so we put that all the way in we give it a little bit of throttle then we can go and turn on the master switches and turn the engine and see what happens. And we have the engine. I'm just going to check the sound levels to make sure that you can hear me over the engine and I think you can. And you still get to hear the rain pitter patter so that's good. And okay having a look round. Let's make sure the controls are connected properly so I can move the flaps. That's good. I can move the mixture, which is good. I can move the throttle, which is good. And OK. So we go and turn on the pitot heat. We turn on the nav strobe and beacon lights. And we'll go and get on our way. OK. First things first, let's go and tune that VOR to our first waypoint. So looking at the map, it's at 114.60. So we go back into the simulator. Now if you look at the radio stack, these are the comm radios on the left and these are the nav radios on the right and you'll notice they have two frequencies. So we want to tune the nav1 radio 
to 114.60. So this is the NAV1 radio that corresponds with this instrument. This is called a course deviation indicator. So it's one more look, uh, 114.60, let's actually do it before I forget it again. So the outer knob does the integers, so 114, and then the inner knob does the decimals, so 114.60. So you'll notice this hasn't done anything yet, and it may not when we switch it on. But half the reason it hasn't done anything is this is the standby frequency. We're not actually using it yet. So we have to switch the standby frequency to become the active frequency. So we press this button. We've done that, and it still hasn't woken up. Probably because we're below the tree line, or we're just not close enough to the VOR station yet. So we've lost you know, enough of a signal to be able to see it. So we'll get, we'll take off in a moment and this will probably come to life. So you will also notice around the outside of the nav instrument is a compass rose and the OBS knob, Omni Bearing Selector knob, lets you spin this compass rose round. So we can use this to tune the radio in to 82 degrees. That's the direction we want to be flying. So let's go and spin this round and we can hold the mouse on to make this happen quickly rather than using the, the mouse wheel to, to roll it around. We want 82, so that's 60, 70, 82 is about kind of there somewhere. This will become more obvious of what this means when we're in the air, so we'll be able to illustrate it while we're flying. Okay, let's come off the parking brake. Let's go for takeoff flaps, and let's open the engine. Try and avoid the person who's busy on their phone, or maybe we should just chop them up with the propeller. Oh, there's a van. I love how the vans just have a death wish in Flight Simulator. So we're going to taxi round. So let's just sit up in the cockpit a second. Okay, we're going to go to this end of the runway. The rain has stopped. How miraculous is that? But knowing that the wind was coming from the west, heading east, and we're going east, we're going to catch the rain up probably. We're going to find ourselves in it very soon. So we're just going to go and taxi down the wrong way, turn around at the other end, and then go and take off. we may end up resetting that rain to make sure we can't see anything because otherwise this is going to be far too easy. So I'm just on the wheel brakes. While we're doing that, let's get the rain back on. So can we have rain please? Is it going to do it for us? Perhaps we have to cycle it to something else and then say, give me rain. Nope. Okay, we'll just go with what we've got and we'll see how bad it gets along the way. Right, let's go and get in the air. So keep an eye on this nav instrument. So we're heading north at the moment. We know we want to travel about 82 degrees. So we're just holding the aircraft on the center line using the rudder. And we pull into the air and rotate and flaps up. I'm just going to climb out and keep an eye on the nav instrument. There it goes, it's just, it's just woken up. So at the moment, we are on the, the line to the other airfield, but we're not doing 70 degrees. Well, we're not travelling at 70 degrees heading. We're travelling north. So watch what happens to this needle over the next minute or so. So we're just coming up to 500 feet. I'm going to reduce our climb rate slightly because we're going a little bit steep. I'm just watching the vertical speed here. Coming up to a thousand feet. Notice this needle is moving. So our heading hasn't changed much, but the needle is moving. This means we are to the left of the 82 degree line into the VOR station. 
yeah so let me just get this trimmed down so we're not going up or down when I'm not holding the controller I'm just you can see the vertical speeds weaving around I'm just using the elevator trim to try and stop that from happening so I'm going to pull the throttle back a little bit so we're not going quite as fast Slowly getting under control. He says famous last words. Okay, there we go. So I'm just going to climb gently. He says as the aircraft absolutely tries to go up like a skyrocket. So we're tra still travelling into the wind. Oh, sorry, across the wind slightly, but we're. At just coming through 1200 feet, 1300 feet. Okay, so we're climbing, the wings are fairly level. We're just going to sort that out. Bit of a tip if you look at this, there's a white strip. If I roll, you'll see it. If you can see the white strip through the, the marker at the top of the attitude indicator, then you are level. Obviously, we watch, so we watch vertical speed more so for if we are actually traveling up or down and we watch the compass and the roll on the attitude indicator because pitch is you know quite fine and you can't really tell unless you look really closely at the pitch bars that how if the nose is up or down and that really doesn't reflect on if you're actually traveling up or down because you might be going slowly and you know um, losing altitude while the nose is slightly up Okay, so we're just coming up to two and a half thousand feet and you can see the needle is now way off to the side. So what that means in terms of the map is we've taken off and we are way, way to the left of the line. Yeah, there's the line. We are to the left of it. If you imagine us here. So we're way to the left of the line. So what we can do is turn the OBS knob until the needle comes into the middle and that means we need to fly at uh, east is 90 degrees so just past 100 degrees to get to the VOR station which we will do so we're just doing a gentle right turn and you can see it's, it's still traveling further away because we're still not traveling towards the VOR station just coming around to 70 degrees 80 degrees so let's keep tuning this in so we now know we need about 115 degrees that's 90 100 115 degrees okay that's good So you will notice on the nav instrument, it says, I'm just going to zoom out a little bit so I can see this while I'm talking and can try and control it and talk and fly at the same time. You will notice that um, there's a line, oh, sorry, that there's a two marker in the top corner of the nav instrument. That means that this angle is to the VOR station. Yeah, so it means we are traveling to it so we've probably flown out here somewhere and we're coming down at 115 degrees we can spin this completely around so we'll just try and keep the plane level and we'll spin it all the way around so you get to see what what difference that makes so if we spin it all the way around the two will flick over and become from and that's of an advantage to us if we're navigating purely by radio so we're still spinning the OBS around and here it comes the needle has now come back but notice it says from so this means we are at two west is 270 285 degrees from the VOR so I'm just going to straighten the plane up while we go and have a look so 285 degrees so if we go and measure distance from here measure distance from the VOR we want 285 there we go so we are somewhere on that line 
heading towards the VOR. Okay? Just straightening us back up. So let's spin this back around, all the way around, and find out what direction we need to keep going to get to the VOR. Because obviously while we were talking about that and looking at the map, the plane had started to roll and we were no longer on that line. But we know we were somewhere along it at the time we did it. So this is made more difficult by having a plane without an autopilot. So we've come up to 3,000 feet, so we don't want to go any higher. So let's come back down a little bit. Okay, so we've spun Nav 1 all the way around now. So we are 120 degrees to the VOR now. So we are travelling at 90 degrees. We need to turn to 120 degrees. Actually, a little bit past 120 degrees. Which will pull the needle back into the middle. So we're overcorrecting slightly to intercept the 120 degree line. And you can see the needle is gently coming back in. put a little bit of aileron trim in to stop us rolling. The wind is basically rolling the aircraft over, which isn't really helpful to us. Now we've overdone it. There we go. So you can see where we overcorrected, we went past 120. We've now gone to the right of that 120 degree line. Or 110 degree, sorry. So if we go to 110, hundred degrees even. So I'm just turning until we get to 100 degrees on the compass. And you can see the needle is going to gently come in if we hold 100 degrees instead of turning gently. So we're still traveling to the VOR. So while we're fairly stable in the air, but although we're far too high at the moment, we're not going to worry about that just yet. We're still travelling to the VOR. When we get there, we want to go from the VOR at 140 degrees. Yeah? So we need to spin this. When it switches over to from, we turn it to 140. So we fly straight over the top of the VOR. So this is saying 110 at the moment, so we need to be flying 110 degrees, which we nearly are. There we go, there's 110 on the compass. Okay, let's sort out our height and get this prepared for when we fly over the top. When we fly over the top of the VOR, this will lose its signal. And then it will switch back on and it will say from. So I'm just correcting the elevator. And keeping on the speed as well, we don't want to overspeed the aircraft. desperately wants to climb all the time and the elevator trim is all over the place and of course every time I put the nose down I accelerate it generates more lift the nose comes up so I'm going to actually cut the throttle yeah we're being pushed the wind is quite sh blustery it's moving around on us so I'm having to fight to stay on the course that we chose. So we're waiting to lose the, the nav signal and for it to become a from signal. Which is about to happen, look. Nav, the nav light has gone out, meaning we've lost the signal. So we continue on at 110 degrees, regardless of what happens here. And this will say from in a moment. So we're back down to 2,000 feet, which is good. So I'm just sorting out the, the climb rate again. So let's get the throttle open back up. 
I'll try and put some elevator trim in to stop this plane diving up and down in the turbulence. So keep an eye on Nav 1, it will start saying from in a few moments. So we just carry on at 110 degrees, because notice that the light went out at the top left, meaning it lost its signal. Oh, no, we still have the signal. We're still good. I thought it had stopped moving. Yeah, the nav saying nav there means it still has the signal. Sorry, I do apologise. So I'm just coming in. Yeah, we're right on top of it because the needle is moving quickly. Very small movements now in the compass direction are making the needle react rapidly. So we are right on top of the VOR station. And it's just about to go behind her. So we're holding 110 degrees. Watch the marker. And it's gone to from. So we want to f fly 120, 30, 40 degrees from VOR. So we will begin turning to 140. Remember, we've just gone over the top of it. So if we fly 150, we should cross back over it and the needle will come back in. Let's go a bit more, 160. Or maybe even 170. Well, we just want to get the needle to cross back over us and then we go for 140 degrees when the needle comes back in. Because remember, this is tuned to the 140 degrees. Here comes the needle. So to stop the needle sweeping across us, we will need to turn back to 140 degrees when the needle's in the middle. So we're flying away from the VOR on the 140 degree radial we want. So we need to fly 140 degrees when the CDI says we're lined up on top of the beam. So we're almost on top of the beam. That's going to 150 degrees to see if we can centre this up. So, we now know we are on the line. Where's the mouse? We are on this line. Somewhere. Going towards the ILS. So we can cheat kind of at this point and we can continue on at 140 degrees but tune the nav radio to 110.95 yeah so we'll tune nav 2 so we've still got the, the VOR behind us to the same frequency so 114.60 we switch that over so nav 2 has come alive We'll turn this to 140 degrees, so we've got the same story going on, on both. And this will give us our reference of the, the direction we are flying in. So 130, 140. A bit more. So we need to fly... There we go. And then we can tune NAV1 now to the, the ILS frequency for the runway, which is 110.95. So we're going to change this instrument to 110.95 and switch it over. And it's already switched on. So what this is saying is we are below the glide slope and we are to the right of the localizer. Yeah, so the line, so if you imagine there's the line into the runway 
So the localizer is like your lateral position. So are you to the left or the right of it? And it's saying we are to the right of the line. So we're somewhere here. Yeah. And as long as we carry on and don't get too high, this will tell us if we get too high. We are at the moment below the invisible line that you might imagine will take us down to the runway apron. But as we get closer to the airfield, this will start falling down and then we chase it and it takes us in a, you know, a nice gentle three degree line down to the apron of the runway. So I'm, while I'm busy talking, I'm flying way off of our track. So I'm just turning back to 140 degrees. So basically we carry on on a 140 degree heading. So I'll just stabilize the airplane. We carry on on this heading until the needle on nav one sweeps into the middle, which means we have crossed over the localizer into runway 19. So we carry on flying along 140 degrees. And at some point in the next few minutes, this needle will start sweeping in meaning we are crossing the center line of the runway. We're a little bit high at the moment, so we'll descend back down a few hundred feet. So I've just tapped the elevator trim. The problem with doing this, as you can see, nose has gone down, speed comes up, more lift, nose goes up again. So it's a bit of a juggling act getting a a simple plane like a 152 to descend just if you're trimming it out. An, e an easier way to do it actually is just to reduce the revs so the aeroplane slows down, you lose lift and the plane gently glides downwards. The wind is still trying to push the tail round. So we're holding our 140 degree heading. If we had another VOR station nearby, which I'm not sure that we have, no. Well there is one, there's one at Elizabeth City. We could use that to triangulate but then we'd have to go and switch VORs and OBS headings so on a shorter leg it's really not worth it. So I'm purposely not looking up. The rain isn't as strong as we had hoped. So I'll look out left. Oh, this, yeah, there is rain. But I don't know if we're going to have it very strong at the destination. So I don't want to look up and ruin the game of, of um, navigating purely on instruments. I actually find navigating on instruments more fun than normal flying. <laughs> it gives you something to do. It's a bit of a, um, a mental challenge, I guess. Ac an academic challenge. To operate an aircraft when you can't see outside and to just follow, trust in the instruments and follow them. So we are still dead on the line at 140 degrees from the VOR station. We are heading towards the ILS for the runway. So if we have another look at the map quickly. We're leaving here on the 140 degree line. We're still on that line somewhere. We're heading towards this radio beacon in the ILS. So you'll notice the OBS knob doesn't do anything on, on once you're um, on ILS. Which, you know, once you're tuned into a glide slope, it, the course essentially is locked, so that won't actually have any effect whatsoever. Just turning us back to 140, we'd start to, to turn again. So something that a lot of people do is just for, for physical reference, I guess, is you go and look at the direction of the runway, so it's 190 degrees in this case. It's just to, once you're tuned into ILS, is actually going to move the, the OBS to be the direction of the runway. 
so 150, 60, 70, 80, 90. But it doesn't have any bearing on the course deviation indicator needles. Now you can see the vertical needle is starting to come down, meaning we're probably getting close. Because remember I said at the beginning of the feathers for the ILS, you usually need to be at 2,500 feet. We are just a little bit above 2,500 feet. We're gently coming down. And this is perfect. Look, the, the rain has really started pelting down for our approach. So we will start looking up in a moment so we can see over the nose and see what's going on out there. So the vertical bar is coming down, which means we are getting closer to a line in the sky that travels at three degrees down to the runway apron. The three degrees is um, a common glide, glide slope angle. So this is telling us if we are on that glide slope line. Our lateral position, left or right, here it comes. So if we turn, once we get to that, to 190 degrees, we know we'll be heading to the runway and we're lined up with the runway. So we're turning now. We've probably overshot slightly. Yeah, we're going to overshoot ever so slightly. It's quite interesting that the um, Cessna 152 doesn't have distance measuring equipment, which kind of would allow us to cheat. So we can see at the moment we're at 190 degrees, but we're slightly to the left. So we're going to turn further than we needed to. And we're going to start descending as well. So we've turned to 210 degrees, and we're pulling this back into the middle. So we're intersecting the line towards the runway. We are slightly to the left of it, but it, we're getting closer. So then we turn back to 190. So we're now at 190 degrees. We're slightly above the glide slope. So I'm going to come off the throttle a little bit. And we're descending quite quickly. We're slightly to the left of the glide slope, so we're turning right as well. So it's all about just methodical changes, and remember that the runway is at 190 degrees. So don't chase these needles, don't keep turning towards them. Just fly a few degrees to the right or the left of the runway direction. Remember for the wind as well, if you've got a strong crosswind, you might end, be, end up crabbing anyway, so you won't want to end up flying the runway direction. In this case, we have got a slight crosswind today, so we're just reacting to the needles. This is pretty horrendous, isn't it? So I'm going to sit us up in the seat now. Come off the speed. Off to the left. So we're off to the right, sorry, we're off to the right of the runway line. A little bit below the glide slope, so we just pull up gently. And just drop flaps to the first position. Just pulling up gently to get us back onto the vertical place in the sky we need to be. So I'm just watching the, the crosshair here. The wind is pushing the nose round quite a lot, so we're having to fight to maintain one, 190. We can see we're getting closer. Turn back towards 190. There we go. So we're at, we are having to crab slightly in the wind. 
we're more or less on the glide slope now so you can see both horizontally and vertically we're in the right sort of place now can we see the airfield in front of us i think it's going to be right in the middle of that cloud directly in front of the airplane because we are lined up on the ILS yeah it is we can see it the lights have just appeared so we're absolutely lined up and yes we have got we are crabbing to maintain the center line So obviously we can cheat now, we can use visual. In the real world you would get to a decision height which depending on weather and your um, rating could be as low as 500 feet, could be as low as 200 feet and if you can't see the wrong way by that, that's above ground level by the way, not above sea level, um, you would have a decision height that you get to and you either choose not to proceed or you, you, know, you go into a circuit. Or if you continue, then <laughs> on your head be it. So as you can see, we've got very low visibility, but we can see the lights at the end of the runway, which is great. We are too high. So this is a great way, actually, when you've got no visibility, really, of the runway. Look, we can still use the ILS. So we've lost the runway again completely, look, in the rain. So we're going to go for full flaps now. We know we're too high, we know we're off to the left and we can correct that easily now. Just by watching the ILS. There we go, so we've centred up the localizer. We're still too high, but here it comes. So we centre that up and it will put us on the right track to land on the apron. And now we've got visuals of the airfield, finally. So obviously this weather was quite extreme and that was on purpose. And I've chosen an aeroplane where I can't cheat and use autopilot, which again was on purpose, to show you that it can be done. You just need to concentrate. Okay. And obviously you get to a, the height you need to to cut the throttle and flare onto the wrong way. And we're down. And then it's obviously steering immediately into the crosswind to stop the plane from veering off. Raise the flaps and we'll taxi in and park and breathe a huge sigh of relief that we made it. So hopefully this was an interesting uh, look at flying with radio navigation in extreme weather in an aeroplane that doesn't allow you to use autopilot so you have to hand fly it. So you could see it was quite a handful at times. I had real trouble getting the elevators to, to trim the aircraft correctly. We're going to go onto the grass here. Look, we're skidding in the rain. That's interesting. I have, appear to have very little wheel braking at all. I'm wondering if I have a control configuration issue there actually. Yeah, I think I may have no brakes, which is why I rolled. So I've just gone and put the parking brake on so we know that does work. Okay, so there you go got slightly muddy tyres at the end or a control configuration issue but the principles we saw there of using VOR stations and flying a route were all good. What will be interesting to do now, I wonder if little nav map will let us show ourselves so the yellow aeroplane has appeared. Yes we can see the track we took look where we were wavering around trying to find the route and we did a pretty good job considering we couldn't see anything and we were just you know doing ready reckoning so you can see where we flew over the top of the VOR and then had to intercept to get back onto the line and then you could see later on when I was playing around with tuning the ILS we started to rotate away from the direction of travel so yeah interesting and you can see that there's the takeoff run where we were just climbing out in a straight line and watching the needle sweep across where we were losing the line into there and then we obviously retuned for 285 degrees into the VOR. 
So yeah, hopefully that all made sense. And that was all made possible by the nav radios. So we've got two tuning knobs here, two instruments with CDIs or course deviation indicators, which allowed us to quite easily navigate ourselves just using a mental picture in your head of where you're going and referring to a chart. So there you go. So in the days before GPS, this is the only way it could be done. Apart from, well actually, there's another instrument over there called an ADF. Um, we're not going to use that today though. Um, yeah, ADF stations are slowly, well there, there's hardly any of them left. And VOR stations are being made obsolete very quickly as well because GPS is relied upon by everybody these days. But it's a great fun way of navigating around especially with the older aircraft that have the the um, nav instruments. Okay, that will do. I'm going to stop recording there and upload this to YouTube.